Thank you, Brother Ricky. I'm going to uh, just exhort you on one point that Brother Ricky made. Uh, I think it's a very critical point to be able to see and make advancements in the kingdom of God to be able to perceive um, these things clearly. Of course, that's why God's given us his Holy Spirit, that we can, we can know the things that are freely ours in Christ. So these things are, um, these observations are clear in Christ, but they're not, you know, we're not, we have a body that's, uh, that's got other things in it. So we, we constantly need these exhortations. Anyone who's offended at exhortation uh, really needs to have a checkup, spiritual checkup. Because the exhortation, God gives exhortations. That's what he does. He'll send someone to either comfort you or to exhort you. You know, why? We need because we need we need it all. We need everything God has for us while we're here because we're here. We're not there yet. So it should be no surprise to me then that someone's going to be sent to me to exhort me. Now, why would I want to be offended at something that's going to help me eternally? Well, see, this is the flesh. The flesh gets offended. They just need to crucify that part. I like this, this uh, point, Brother Ricky, made we're not self-made people. You know, if you reason on this, this point, now, if I'm not, if in Christ I haven't arrived there because of something foundationally that I did, well, now staying there isn't all on my shoulders. Now, I know, you know, uh, Brother Ricky made this point. We are the ones that have to be, the, we, have, we do the believing, right? God, Christ gave us faith. God gave us faith. But you have to be the one to actually use it. Do something with that faith. Make your calling and election sure. But it does say if you do these things, you'll never fall. Isn't that what it says? Well, who's going to do that part? God's going to do that part. You stay with Christ, and he'll keep you from falling. Now, now the God sent his son. Now, 1 John 4, 9 says, God sent his son into the world that we might live through him. Now, look at that vicarious life. We have life. But we don't have life in ourselves like Christ. Remember, Christ had life in himself. So now Christ comes up to a situation. He knows all things are going to come upon him. And he, can, he executes the Father's will. Why? Because he knows, he knows the Father's will. Now, see, we... To the degree you know and understand God, to that same degree you'll be able to stand. Now, how do you know that? Whom to know is life. You get in Christ, Christ starts showing you God. So you start experiencing eternal life now, and to that degree, you're able to stand. Now, what is vicarious standing? You can stand because of his working in you. You didn't originate it. You didn't even initiate it. But you're part of it nonetheless. You're standing, right? Well, how'd you get there? Well, it's not by works of righteousness, which I've done. We're not self-made men, in other words. Galatians 4, 6 says, because you are sons. Now, I can already tell you this. You didn't know you were a son before God put you in Christ. You didn't sit there and think, you know, I think I'm a son. Well, anyway, you're, in the, you're, in, you're dead in trespasses and sins. How could you know you're a son? Well, see, once you get in Christ, God makes this evident to you. And why? Why does he do that? Because if you didn't know you were a son, enduring would be something very difficult. How would you be able to endure until the end if you didn't know? See, that's the whole point of making your calling election sure. Sure to who? Sure to you. God already knows. And because you're sons, what has he done? He sent forth the spirit of his son. Isn't it? This is good stuff. God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, asking for things that, that you're going to have to have to endure. But you didn't. You're not the one that knew. You're not the one. See, you didn't initiate this conversation. God, because you're a son, because in other, words, in other words, he chose you in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. Because of that, he sent his spirit in. Why did he do that? So you could stand so you can be holy, so you can be righteous, so you can be acceptable. But, but who did the work is the point. God did the work. Christ is his spirit. It's his spirit. It's in you. And what's he doing? Confirming you unto the end. Now when you stand there, and it is this picture, it's a powerful picture. And I think of this often. What's the first thing you're going to do 
that it's recorded in scriptures, when you get there, you see him as he is, you're going to cast your crowns at his feet. You're going to acknowledge that you brought me here. Salvation all the way from the very beginning when I was first called until the moment I stood before him and I was accepted and got the word from him, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. You cast your crowns at his feet in acknowledgement. Salvation's of the Lord. We're not self-made people, are we? You cannot, another point he made in this, you cannot turn yourself from sin. You couldn't do it at the beginning. And anywhere along the way, if you've, if you've experienced any victory, it's because God was with you. This is Ephesians 5.26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Now connect this with having victory over sin. Being able to say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Being able to endure unto the end. Listen to this. That he might cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So how did you get holy? And what's keeping you clean? It's God. God's working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, I know some would say, well, wait a minute, you, you're just taking all this and you're just, you're, 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 people are going to be lazy now because if, I don't know anyone who's ever seen this correctly that has ever been lazy about it. Amen. You start walking with God and it doesn't provoke laziness, it Amen. provokes diligence. Amen. He, because see, really when you get down to it, there's much more in us that's got to come out of us uh -huh. than we dare imagine. God is faithful at exposing, he gives us the Holy Spirit to show us the things that have to go, and like Brother Ricky said, the things that we have to enter into. There, God doesn't open some doors until other doors are closed. In other words, you've got to walk away from some things before you'll ever even see the, 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 the higher things. Well, praise God, he's given us of his spirit. This is another thing. I've just been constantly amazed by this. He gives us his spirit. Why? Because his spirit knows what his will is. Specifically, his will in your life, and he leads, he'll guide you. He'll guide you. We needed a guide, didn't we? I wasn't doing too well on my own, I'll testify to that. I needed a guide, and he gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Well, I praise God for that. I enjoyed, not only enjoyed, I was edified by those words, Amen. and um, I thank God for you. Thank you, Brother Amen. Ricky, for that words.